How y'all doing? Golden Boys, Kirk Henderson. Actually, I was uh, I was sitting here thinking, well, why not do another video? I mean, I, th I thought about it. I mean, about this Steve Harvey and Mary Harvey's situation. I mean, I'm looking at all this stuff that's going on. And then I also look at my situation, the grandmother baby scam. And you know what really came to my mind? Is when I say it's the kids who are the ones who are suffering the most. I mean, if you look at it, if you look at it, look at the kids. Say, for instance, I have seen and heard kids who have gone through the same situation where the baby mother have kept the kids away from the fathers. Same situation. I mean, they use that situation for paycheck, for money, or whatever the situation is. I mean, it was all about what they can get out of it. But this is a good time for me to talk about this situation. Now, the kids come into the picture, and guess what? They end up being bipolar, schizophrenic. I mean, they got a lot of hate in their heart because of what happened in the past. And guess what? This low life baby mother or baby father who kept the kids away from the other parent just totally had no idea what they were doing to mess up the other kid. Now, the, now the other kid, now the kids are bipolar, schizophrenics, and it's like it, it, it comes and goes. You know, you can just be sitting down talking to them, then all of a sudden they just the mind just drift out in another in another world, and they're getting real angry and real mad. You know, my father wasn't around. My father didn't do this and my father didn't do that. But guess what? The other parent who has kept the kids away from the other parent. Now, guess what they do? They tell them all kind of lies. Oh, your father didn't do this. Oh, your mother didn't do this and your mother didn't do that. Oh, and they make up all kind of crazy lies and make up all kind of crazy stories. I mean, for instance, my baby's mother. I'm talking about the grandmother baby scam now. I'm back on the grandmother baby scam. Guess what these slum bags low life did to me? Out of all that scamming they did. They wanted full control over the whole situation. Now it, it goes to another level where they actually wanted to, to turn my kid against me. They, they done went all out their way with the family, telling all kind of lies, abnormal lies. And, 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 and I mean, these people just went out of the way. For instance, now, I was on Facebook a couple years ago. All of a sudden, a family member of Veronica Robinson and Patricia Robinson, all of a sudden, she just lunched out at me. Her name is Carla. During that time, her name was Carla Pretty Blah on Facebook. Anyway, I mean, Facebook caught ear to what was going on and heard all this scheming and scamming stuff that Carla Pretty Blah did. Facebook shut her down. But anyway, these people went so low for it. <clears throat> Patricia Robinson created a false claim with the DA. Now, she knew I wasn't living in California. So she made a false claim with the DA. And now all of a sudden, they was trying to put something on me. And I'm like, it's a good thing that my cousin was still living in in LA at the same address because they knew that I was living in, in, in Houston. And so now here it is. I mean, I'm in, I'm just sitting back chilling 
and I get a call from my, my cousin out in uh, L.A. Hey, Kirk, man, I got, man, you just got some mail, man. You know, these people got some kind of claim against you with the D.A., man. And I said, well, open it up. Tell me what's going on, man. Oh, man. These people filed a false claim with the D.A. out in L.A. trying to have you arrested. And they talking about you going to need some kind of big attorney to get you out of this because because you are a child molester. You are an abuser. You are a I mean, they just went out of the way with all kind of lies, scandalous ideas. But see, see, the scam here is, is that this adopted mother here now. She was still trying to find a way to adopt my daughter without my consent. You know what I'm saying? She tried to adopt my daughter without my consent. So she wanted to make me look as bad as she could in every way she could because she felt like this is my chance. Now, he don't know where I am. He can't see his daughter. He can't be because I move, I jump around, do all kind of stuff. So let's scan his ass, bitch. Excuse me, but that French had to come out. I know I've been Mr. Nice Guy, and this stuff has been building up in me for so long, and I held this stuff in. But this scandalous ass bitch made a false claim with the DA and tried to have me thrown in jail behind some nonsense allegation bullshit that she made up. Because she had, she had, Patricia Robinson had to try to find a way to make me look like the bad guy to mess me up. Because that was really her chance to, uh, to try to adopt my daughter without my consent. So anyway, they had a family member by the name of Carla Pretty Blah out in L.A. All of a sudden, this girl just started messaging me all kind of screwed up messages all kind of fake false allegations i would name some of the stuff i mean it was just terrible 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 all kind of cursing this girl don't know anything about me nothing not a damn thing and she just made i mean between patricia robinson veronica robinson and uh, Veronica, yeah, Veronica, Patricia, and Carla, they just made up all kind of false allegations. I mean, just went out of the way. So they really tried to uh, destroy my character. They tried to destroy my character as a man and tried to break me down and make me look like this, this willow beast. You know, just, I mean, all kind of abnormal allegations. And I like, what the hell? And this girl was on Facebook with all this nonsense. And I said, okay, another one of the grandmother baby scam, Patricia Robinson's scams. So anyway, I reported it to Facebook. And Facebook shut her motherfucking ass down. If you, if you pull up Call a Pretty Blah Kimball, she shut down. I mean, she didn't have to do all that. She got involved into my situation. Here I am, a grown-ass man. And I'm fighting for my rights to be in my kid's life. I was there with my baby's mother all these years. I mean, they just dog me out. I'm in the hospital now. My baby mother just gave birth, had just gave birth to my daughter. And I'm in the hospital, just 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 a happy man, just just bubbly. I'm always just a natural happy go lucky man. You know, I'm just sitting back and I'm just, just smiling ear to ear. Yeah. Me and my baby mother have a beautiful baby girl, Alexa, Charlie. Henness, I said that with authority and with an S and a beauty of love, the way I said my baby girl's name. And I was like just looking at her, you know. Then all of a sudden, 
the adopted mother, Patricia Robinson, was on the right side. And then her adopted daughter was on the left side. Her name was Gramanda and Patricia Robinson was on the right side. All of a sudden, Patricia Robinson, let me tell you something, Kirk. That baby will not be no Alexa Charlie Henderson. That would be my dead husband's name. Alexa Charlie Robinson. That's the way she said it. Then all of a sudden, she had a she had a 14-year-old on the left side. I mean, this girl was way out of line. That ain't your baby. That ain't your baby. That ain't your baby. That baby will not be no Alexa Charlie Henderson. That baby will be Alexa Charlie Robinson. I mean, these people just, ooh, I mean, they flipped, man. And I was like in the hospital like with, I, I was like with unbelief. I was looking like, damn, these some crazy people. But anyway, they, they just went, ooh, these people are crazy. Man, I was like so disappointed. I was so, I just didn't know what to do at that point, man. I mean, this adopted mother, and now you have a 14-year-old who are cursing me out right here in the hospital. Um, and I'm in the prime time, the hap supposed to be the happiest time of my motherfucking life. And you got both of these women just cursing me out and calling me all kind of names because they did not want me to be in my kid life. And wow, man, I just shook my head. So anyway, that, that day, man, I was just so confused, man. It, it's like all of this stuff comes about after my girl had a baby now. So anyway, I, I went home, you know, and I was like just thinking about the stuff. I thought about it over and over again, and I was like, wow. So anyway, I came back the next day. I just said, well, okay, well, just maybe they had some issues. Maybe, maybe, maybe something is, is wrong with the picture. Maybe they haven't gotten over the death of uh, Patricia Robinson's husband, you know. Anyway, uh-uh, that didn't change a thing here, baby. I was in the hospital the next day. Veronica was, was, was laying in bed, and I just walked in in the room, you know, with, with my little beautiful flowers, and I was like just, and my daughter just lit up. My little, my little newborn baby just lit up when she saw her daddy. And I said, hey, hey, Alexa, daddy's here. Daddy's here. Daddy loves you. And she just bust out with a big old pretty alley cat smile, just like me. Smiling ear to ear. And I'm like just holding my baby. Daddy loves you, Alexa. Daddy's little girl. And I started singing to her. Daddy's little girl. Daddy loves you. Daddy's little girl. And she was just smiling, just bubbling ear to ear. Me, Alexa Charlie, my newborn baby was was so happy. She was so happy like that song, like that motherfucking song, happy, 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 that for real, William made my baby was happy, happy, happy. And I was a happy man, you know, like never before. Then all of a sudden, Patricia Robson just busting in through the door. <laughs> What the hell you doing in here, Kurt? I will whip your ass. You just step outside. I'm like, what, what, what? Woman, I'm here holding my baby and you come in here with that? I mean, you pulled that yesterday. Now today is something different. This woman had her hands balled up. Telling me she gonna whip my ass and I step outside and she gonna do this to me and she gonna do that to me. And and I I simply just told her, I was trying my best to keep my cool. I say, look, Patricia Robinson, won't you just let it go? You have caused enough damage here. You're doing all this stuff here in the front of my little newborn baby here. And then by that time, Alexa started screaming and hollering, you know. I mean, just, and that woman was steady telling me, she, 
She gonna whip my ass, put the baby down, put the baby down. I will whip your ass. Man, this stuff was getting serious. It was really getting out of control. So by that time, I, I hand my baby to my baby mother. Then she act like she go. By that time, security rush into the room. What the, I said, Wait a minute, man. What, what's going on here? You know, we see everything on the cameras here. This man in here enjoying his baby. And you just bust in here and cause a whole lot of problems here. And, and create a whole lot of static. What's going on? You know, why, why can't you just let this man enjoy his beautiful baby girl here? I mean, she's so beautiful. You know, is, is all this stuff necessary? What, what you doing? Just tell him to step outside. I will whip his ass. You know, like she was fucking mentally retarded. I had a mental ill problem all of a sudden, you know. And security, he said, ma'am, I'm just going to ask you to just leave right now. This man has first choice. He, he enjoying his baby. And you're creating a lot of problems here in the hospital. We're going to ask you to leave. So they asked her to leave. And man, that woman, you can just see a horn sticking up. She was so great, so angry, so upset, so mad. She didn't even want me to, to hold my baby. She didn't want me to sing to my baby. So anyway, here we go again. So now I'm like just, damn, some crazy people. So anyway, the next day I, I left the house I said man I see where I stand now with this all of this stuff is coming out after my girl have the baby so now all hell is breaking loose man that, that ain't the end of it now so now all hell breaks loose now now the next day I come to the hospital and and I, 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 I'm, I'm thinking with the right mind I had called up my baby mother and, and told her look uh we need to go ahead and get the, the birth certificate right with the social security and all that good stuff. So, you know, we have all that stuff taken care of. So anyway, I went to the front desk and, and to the social security department and I asked them for the, I requested for the paperwork. And they said, well, your baby mother already had the paperwork. So anyway, I said, okay, cool. So I went, I went back into the room and guess what these sneaky bitches has did now? Y'all are not going to bleed. Yes. Guess what she did? Hey, Veronica. Hey, um, uh, so security front desk, they said they gave you the paperwork and that, uh, me and you need to go ahead and take care of that so we can have this stuff situated the right way. And Veronica just looked at me. Now, all of a sudden, my baby mother just changed on me. She just looked at me. I don't know what you're talking about. What paperwork? All of a sudden, she tried to play dumb. So now I'm like, well, uh, front desk, social security, they told me you guys have the paperwork and that the father and the mother needs to take care of the paperwork and get this squared away. Oh, she tried to play me. She tried to play me like she didn't know what I was talking about. What's wrong with you? You got some kind of problem. Why, what, why are you tripping? All of a sudden now, my baby mother turned on me in the hospital when I'm simply asking for the paperwork to take care of, of, of this paperwork. So anyway, I'm, I'm like, so anyway, I, I just look, look, Veronica, you need to just come straight up and tell me what's, where it's the paperwork. So all of a sudden, she just finally broke. She broke. Uh, uh, I'm going to show you how you do uh, 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 it. Come on with it. Come on with it. Uh, uh, it's over there under the flower pot. I reach over there under the flower pot and get the paperwork. And guess what? Patricia Robinson had frauded my baby birth certificate right there in the hospital. She frauded all the paperwork to Alexa Charlie Robinson. She wanted she wanted it to be that way so she can say 
that that Charlie Robinson was the baby father. In other words, it was her husband who had died. So she wanted to scam her way to say that it was his baby so she could collect Social Security off of my baby through her dead husband. I mean, she just signed everything off and pretty much just did not want me to be a part of anything. She didn't want me to sign off on nothing, do anything. So I was like, oh, no, no, no. No, this 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 not going down like this. It ain't going down like this. So I took paperwork and I went back to Social Security and, and I kept the other paperwork and I hey look 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 this woman has frauded everything on this paperwork. This woman had frauded the baby birth certificate in the hospital. So anyway, they gave me some more paperwork and I got a chance to fill it out the correct way. Me and Veronica got a chance to fill out the paperwork the right way and we, we took care of everything the right way and so everything was cool. So now I'm like, but still, deep down in my heart, I knew I had some demons that I was dealing with, man. You talking about, man, I feel like, okay, I just we just had a newborn baby and and now everybody's turning on me. So now I'm like I come back the next day, so now we decided they're going to go ahead and do a D DNA. Okay, so anyway, now I'm like in the hospital, they doing, doing my little swab and doing my baby mother, and then all of a sudden, Patricia Robinson, family members just bust, bust in the hospital, bust into the room, and they like just, I mean, they remember now. The whole family turned on me. So she had like a, a, a so-called pastor adopted brother. His name is Marcus Robinson. He is another one who was adopted and he don't know who his fucking real father is. Neither Veronica Robinson. None of them don't know who their fucking real father is. Because Patricia Robinson has did them exactly the same way the way they did her. So now, this adopted brother now, he's supposed to be a preacher in the church. Come to find out, he's an alcoholic. You go to his house and bill boxes stacked up from the floor up to the ceiling of the house. From the floor up to the ceiling of the house. Now he's supposed to be a preacher now. So anyway, we we in the hospital now. He just walk into the room and he like this. It. He looking at me all crazy, trying to intimidate me. I'm going to give you the look yet. I mean, some cruel, evil looks. I'm like, what the hell? So anyway, I, I, was, sit, I was holding my baby girl. I was holding my baby girl like this here. Just, hey, baby, daddy loves you. Daddy loves you, Alexa Charlie Henderson. Daddy loves you. Mm -hmm. Daddy loves you. Lex was just smiling. She was just smiling. And, and here, 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 this so called Pastor Marcus. He liked this here. Like he was going to whoop my ass or something. Like he was trying to intimidate me. And I was like, I, so I was like holding my baby. And then all of a sudden, I look up. And I see this motherfucker looking at me like this. So I just slowly and slow motion hand my baby to my baby mother. And I just looked at him crazy, the motherfucker. So this, this the kind of game y'all playing? I gave him the nasty fucked up look. And so anyway, he made it happen like that. So anyway, now, now I'm in the hospital uh, you know, I just let let him see that nobody was afraid of him. In the name of Jesus, you would get fucked up if, if you get to fucking with me. So anyway, I got up and I just walked right over to this Pastor Marcus and I just looked him in his face. I was saying to myself, we're in this hospital, but trust me, you make one little fucking move, I will. Fuck you up. 
And he goes like this now. He looking at me. Then all of a sudden. He just jerk his head the other way. And I said to myself, nah, he's a coward. You gonna come up here in the hospital starting all this here. And I'm here supporting my baby mother being a father to my baby girl. And you gonna do this? You gonna do this to me? So anyway, I, I, I was like just so. <sighs> so anyway, uh, handing my baby to my baby mother. And man, these people like just gather around my daughter like vultures. They was like just, ooh, look at that old baby. Ooh, ooh. And they, they was like, and Alexa was looking at her father like this. Daddy, daddy. And you should have seen the look on their face. All these people looked like they hated and they did not want my baby girl to be a part of her father's life. They messed her up, man. And so, so now, to make a long story short, my story is really about it's the kids who suffers the most. To be really honest, it's the kids. If you think about it, the kids turn out being bipolar and schizophrenic. If you think about it, one minute you could you could like just be sitting down talking to them, and they go off on you. Their mind just drift away. They always feel like something was missing in their life. I'm talking about from experience, from people that I know, who this kind of stuff has gone through the, the exact same thing. And the kids, I mean, they're cool at first. When they when they finally come back into the picture. And, and to me, this stuff kind of breaks them down because it it messes with their mind. When they are little babies and little kids missing their father or missing their mother and, and they're broke down. Their mind is just so corrupt. I mean, I didn't mean to say corrupt, but their mind is just so screwed up. And they just feel so lost and they feel so taken advantage of. How could my mother do this to my father? Or how could my father do this to my mother? And these kids are just, all this stuff is just going in inside. And it's just, they have to live with this kind of stuff every single day. And mentally, this is what is destroying the kid's life. This is really what's destroying the kid's life. That's why they, they just so hurt and so messed up, so dysfunctional. They turn out schizophrenic, bipolar. I mean, they just all screwed up. And you can't tell me nothing. Okay, Steve, he raised his son all by himself with Margie. But it's nothing like that kid having his real biological mother in his life. I mean, he took all that away, Steve. And like I said earlier, you, you, you didn't have to do that. So my point is, is that the kid suffers the most and my heart just goes out to all the kids. How could these low life scumbags, son of a bitches do this to the kids, man? I was really nice on my first video. I've been holding a lot of this stuff in. Because of the way my baby mother and her adopted mother did me. But how could these low life motherfuckers do this shit? To kids. To the kids. You know, I'm a good man, but I'm going to speak my mind. How could these low lives do this to, to kids? To the creation I mean, your creation, mother creation, and the father creation. And how could another parent just destroy all of that and just take that away, mess up the other parent's life, and think everything is cool? Hey, Steve, one word. Man, pay the woman. 
Just pay the woman, man. I think you owe her at least 80 million. Fuck the 60 million. Get 80 million out of that motherfucker. But anyway, excuse my French, but it's just the way this shit came out this time. I mean, I think about all this stuff. You owe that woman $80 million, uh, Steve. And I'm just going to say what I feel, man. You, 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 took a, you took a lot, man. Anytime, let me tell you something. Anytime you destroy a kid's life and you destroy your baby mother's life and you messed her up and you took all of this away, all these years away, you can never repay that. I don't care how much money you got. You can never repay all the bonding, all them baby years, all this time has gone by. And other parent, you just took all it away. You took it all away. And, and you pretend now, okay, I'm on my high throne. I'm the man of the hour. I got everything going on. I got everything I want. But you broke that woman down. And ain't no telling how your son gonna turn out later on because you mentally abused him as well. And most of the time, when you do that to a kid, they're gonna turn out schizophrenic, bipolar, messed up. So my word to you, Steve, or whoever, you need you need to you need to get the kid into some counseling to seek help. Trust me, this stuff is gonna come back, and it's gonna play a, a big part on his life later on throughout the years. You know, this stuff go, it comes and goes, and this this kid is gonna turn out to be bipolar or schizophrenic, because right now. I I know people, I ain't gonna say no name, but they are going through the exact same thing. And this bipolar schizophrenic stuff has messed them up because they cannot accept and get over the same situation the way it's, e it's either the mother or what the father did to them. And they can't let it go, they can't get over it, so they end up hating everybody. They hate everybody. They're mad and they're angry and they're upset all the time. Yep, trust me. <clears throat> so anyway, I had to do a, a part two on this. I mean, really, truly, it's the kids who suffers the most. And I feel like um, the government should make it a law that all fathers and mothers should be in their kid's life, no matter what. Make it a law. It is the kids who suffers the most. And if America do not wake up today and correct this situation, the kids are our future. And it's just everywhere you look, same old story. So many kids messed up without a father or without a mother. Because one of the other parents kept the kids away from the other parent and created all kind of problems, just messed up their life. This mentally abused that kid. So I think the government do need to correct this situation. The government needs to step in on this situation. The family, the kids are our future. And without our kids, this is the next generation. In the next generation. I mean, we want happy kids. We want happy family. Don't you know when a kid have both parents in their life, they do better in school. They make better grades. They know exactly what they want in life. They grow up to be fine doctors, lawyers, engineers. I mean, they be at their best. I mean, they're happy. But when you take another parent away from the other parent, this does something mentally to that kid. Not only, Steve, that you mentally abuse Mary, 
you mentally abused your son. I mean, I'm just saying what I feel and it's the truth because of what I'm going through. And uh, I just wish the government would make it a law. Both parents should be in the kid's life. Let this be a eye opener for America. Both parents should be in the kid's life no matter what. Make it a law. Now, if y'all want to do something about that, make a ride out of that. That both parents should be in the kid's life. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed my story. I uh, hope the one get offended. But I'm just keeping it real, 100. And uh, I'm telling it the way it is. I'm telling my story. <laughs> telling my story. So, anyway, y'all be good. Take care. Peace. Love and happiness. I'll see y'all next time. Okay, bye.